I had an experience that in the corporate church, when they would say a prayer and everybody's praying, at some point I was feeling like, can my voice really go through for God to hear? Because at that time, I did not really get an understanding of this personal revelation of me knowing that my prayer is personal between me and God. So it was like everybody's in church and everybody's trying to pray, everybody's trying to get loud and how will God hear my own? Because I'm listening to my neighbor standing right beside me and it feels like their prayer is so eloquent. There's no way God will not answer his prayer because they are aligning their words very well. And I am here not even knowing what to say again after saying the line of the prayer. And you have to know prayer is about your faith in God. You don't need to say words as if you are trying to convince God in a debate. God, I want you to see reasons why you should do this. Because you are the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. You can do that, but that is not for you to whine God. That is for you, yourself, to remind yourself who God is. Every name you call God is not to hide God. Every name you call God is to bring your consciousness to faith that this God is powerful, that He's awesome, that He can do these things you're asking of Him. Why do you pray? Your prayer is to align your desires with the will of God. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, when He was teaching the disciples about prayer, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So when you pray, you're telling God, your will be done in my life regardless of what I want. Hey, that's serious. That's deep. That's something that in our human flesh doesn't feel so good. But to the Spirit of God, that's the kind of prayer God wants. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was telling the Father, I wish that this cup would pass by, but not as I will. Your will be done. That was where the change came. Because if you come to God in this relationship, and just want to come to him whenever you need something from him. It is a toxic relationship that you have with God. It is just as having a relationship with someone, whether friendship or an intimate relationship. And you are always going to them only when you need something. You only want to communicate with them when you need something. That is toxic. That is unhealthy. You are a parasite. Because you are not building connection with this person. Which means you don't regard this person. You don't take them serious. You are just trying to use them and you can't use God because God knows your heart. So when it comes to you coming to God in prayer, it is you presenting your request to God and asking God, this is what I want, but your will be done. Not as I want, but your will be done. David said one prayer in Psalms 139 that is so powerful to me. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. This is so powerful because it portrays what the prayer you make to God looks like. Whenever you are praying to God, it is you coming to God with your request. It is not you coming to God with your command, as if you are in charge, just telling God, go and do this and do that for me. You need to know who is in charge here. God is in charge, you're not. God's will is the best for you, even when you don't think it is. It still is the best for you. Your feelings don't have to agree that God has your best interest at heart. You only need to align with God and be in the right direction for God's will in your life to be fulfilled. Because the more you delay asking for God's will, the more you delay your destiny. So now, who is the problem here? It is you. God is not telling you not to plan. But he says, plan. But I'm the one to decide what is going to happen. So whenever you pray, in the name of Jesus. That's the filter for your prayer. Will this glorify God? Will this be a blessing to you and give honor to God? Prayer is not for you to inform God, but to inquire of God. David in First Samuel chapter 30, when he went for war with his men and came back and his family was taken captive and the city was burnt down. He would have just in anger just said, let's arise, try to motivate the soldiers. Let's go and fight back and take back our possession. Like sometimes we rise up in our flesh and just try to do things because we think we are wise. We think we know what to do. We think we are capable. And David did not do like that. He went to God and said, God, should I go? Should I pursue? Not just that. Will I succeed at this? This is to tell you, whenever you pray, you are not praying to inform God of anything. God knows everything that you want to do. He knows your heart. He reads your heart. But you are praying to inquire of God. And that's how you should pray. That's why you should pray, which means you don't go find someone you want to date and bring the person to God and tell him, I just want to inform you that this is the person I want to date. 
as if you are doing that to your parents. That's not how you do to God. You can choose whoever you want to date and want to marry and take them to show your parents if they agree or not. But when it comes to God, you have to let God decide what's best for you, which is you are inquiring of him. God, I want to date this person. Should I? Should I not? If I do, will it be good? What do I do when I do this? If you want to get married, you ask God, should I get married to this person? Should I not get married to this person? And this is when you align with God's will, which is your character, your conduct. You should do what is right. It doesn't mean you go into a relationship, for example, and you're not trying to do everything right, but you are tiptoeing. You're not fully committed. You are tiptoeing and then you are saying, oh, it wasn't just God's will. No, do all you're supposed to do. But then ask God for his will. Do the right thing that honors God. Put God at the center and tell God, should I continue with this or should I not? I want to do this contract, God, but I want to inquire of you. Is this going to bring me profit? Is this going to be good for me? Is this going to go wrong? If not, show me. So it is you inquiring of God, trying to get more information, trying to get direction, trying to allow the Spirit of God to be your compass, trying to allow the peace of God to be your compass, which is you telling God, if this is not going to be good, don't give me peace in this. That's a powerful prayer. And that is why you pray, so that you can have direction, so that God can teach you and show you what to do. It is not for you to go and inform God. This is what I want to do. So I'm just coming to tell you, I don't know what you think about it, but I've already made up my mind. And that's how a lot of believers pray, which is why we don't get answers from God. The number three thing is that prayer is a love commitment to God. It's a dedicated act that you have because of this intentional relationship that you have with God. It is not something that you just do because you are doing it to get something from God. It is not for you to do it as a means to an end. It is for you to pray because you are intentional about getting to know more of God. So when you see prayer as a love commitment to God, you keep doing this knowing that God loves you. You're not just praying to a God you do not know. You are praying to a God that you are certain of his character. You know who he is. You know he answers prayers. You know he loves you. So lastly, where do you pray? Jesus said to the disciples in Matthew chapter 6 when he talked about prayer, whenever you want to pray, go into your closet, close the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will answer you openly. And sometimes this could be turned to look like build a closet in your house, make a prayer altar there and be praying to God. My argument with that is somehow people tend to idolize these things, which is you build an altar in your home a secret place. You don't want anybody to step into that place. If anybody ever has to stumble on there, maybe you're a parent, your child has to go play there, your anger will just go up. And you're like, why would you play there? This is a secret place. This is this and that. And you'll be angry. Now, what am I trying to say? Am I trying to condemn people that have an altar, a place, special place to pray in your house? No. But all I'm trying to say is, if you don't have a special place, there's no condemnation either. It is just for you to realize that God did not say, pray here or pray there. He says, pray always. Men always ought to pray, which is sometimes you'll be in your office. Make that your altar. Sometimes you'll be on the road. Make your altar there. And how do you make this? The Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you, which means in the temple is where you find the altar. So if your body is the temple, your heart is the altar. That is why God said, blessed are the pure in the heart, for they shall see God. Because when your heart is pure, which is your altar, you can see God, you can communicate with God, you can have this pure relationship with God, you can have this conversation with God and know that God listens to you, He hears you, and you can hear Him talk back to you. That is why the scripture keeps on telling us that we should be holy as our Father in heaven is holy. So it is not about a special place in your home or a special place anywhere. It's about making your heart pure instead of getting your heart defiled, but making sure that you cleanse your heart for you to be able to communicate with God. Because your brain to God is for you to have this privacy of communication with Him, whereby you have this uninterrupted flow of listening to Him and He speaks to you. And at that point, you need to know that it's about quality time, leaving some things out. But on the discipline part, 
It's about always praying wherever you are, whether in the office, whether in church, at home, whether on your bed, whether on your couch, whether in the kitchen, as you're cooking, you're praying. God hears. Whether in your bathroom, God hears. Most times I get some inspiration more when I'm in my bathroom because my mind is clear. You just need to cultivate this discipline of making sure you reach out to God, you talk to God, you hear God, you enjoy this fellowship with Him. 